So there's been a lot of conversation recently about the opening ceremonies of the Summer Olympic Games. And what I wanted to do in this real quick episode is share with you a couple of Bible verses that were popping into my mind as I watched these opening ceremonies. In my own personal experience, one of the most helpful skills that a Christian can cultivate is learning how to think biblically about the world around you. A famous pastor, Adrian Rogers, said that a Christian should should have a newspaper in one hand and then understand that newspaper with his Bible in the other hand. Uh, that, that we learn how to, to see the world through the Word. Um, and, and what I want to do is share with you a couple of those verses that came to mind. The first one that came to mind when I saw this is Romans chapter 1. Uh, in, in Romans 1, Paul describes what happens to humans when uh, they are left to their own devices. When Christ does not intervene and our sinful nature is allowed to run full steam ahead, this is what he says here in Romans 1. Uh, he says, verse 21, For although they knew God, they didn't honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity and to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. When I saw these opening ceremonies, this verse just popped into my mind. Um, You had all these brilliant minds who I'm sure for years were developing these and choreographing this, this opening ceremony. And the, the greatest brilliant minds, what they were able to come up with was what looked like this pseudo-paganistic display of sexual immorality, of gender dysphoria. You had a, a kind of a confusing display here that I'm not really sure how it was supposed to be tied to sport, how it was supposed to be tied to competition. Um, it, it makes sense here, though, when Paul goes, hey, when your sinful nature is left unchecked, when you can you can claim to be wise, but your your thinking becomes futile, um, your heart becomes darkened. You become obsessed with the worship of creation rather than the worship of the Creator, and, and you're turned over to all kinds of lusts, all kinds of sexual sin. This is what happens when left to our own devices. And when I was watching these ceremonies, I was like, oh my goodness, look, it's Romans 1 coming to life right in front of us. There was another verse that uh, popped into my head. It, it was maybe a little bit strange to pop into my head, but I couldn't help but think of it. It was Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Paul says in that passage that everything has been made by Jesus, through Jesus, and for Jesus. What that means is that you and I, as humans... We have been made by Jesus, through Jesus, and for Jesus. C.S. Lewis famously said that the human machine runs on Christ. It doesn't run on any lesser God. We're designed to worship and know and love Jesus. That's what we're built for. We're not designed to run on anything else. And, And what I started to think here was we've been lied to. We've been tricked. There has been this real subtle, very clever lie that has been kind of whispered through the universities, whispered through culture, that you and I could be these spiritually neutral, um, a spiritual, kind of atheistic, neutral people. We could just be rational. We could just be scientific. Let's push God out of the equation. We, we don't need God anymore. We have evolution, we have science, we have technology, and we could just sort of be these spiritually neutral people who are only guided by reason, only guided by science and logic. And what I saw in these opening ceremonies is that that's like a baited hook, that it's actually impossible to stay neutral. Um, Our hearts will worship something. It is unavoidable. 
we're designed to worship. It, it's in our programming to take something and make it ultimate, take something and make it the thing we go to for peace, the thing we go to for comfort, the thing that we go to to hope in a better tomorrow. All of us do this. We all elevate something to that ultimate seat. So there is no neutrality. There's no such thing as us being spiritually neutral. We will pick sides. We will either worship the one true God or we will worship a lesser created God. And once again, I saw here in the footsteps of Romans 1, I saw these brilliant minds, very creative, I'm sure, but glorifying the creature, glorifying sexual sin, glorifying paganism, glorifying false gods. And it struck me. I'm like, there it is. You see, there's the fruit of secularism. Secularism doesn't lead to a more um, spiritually neutral society. It leads to a more spiritually dark society. It leads to a more pagan society. It leads to a more devilish, diabolic society. And, and these ceremonies, these opening festivities were just like a little hint at it. This is what secularism produces. Um, and, and I started to feel kind of bummed out. I'm like, man, look at the sinful nature running here. Look at we're, we're trading in the truth of God for a lie. I started to feel really bummed, started to kind of join the chorus of outrage that a lot of people in the culture are, are rightfully putting out there. And then another verse popped into my head. And it was 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, this verse here restored a little bit of hope, a little bit of um, a little bit of peace to my heart. Because it made me realize that despite all this darkness, the Christian still has the most potent spiritual weapon in all of the spiritual arsenal. And it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Here's what 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 says. Uh, this passage, just like Romans 1, very offensive. Uh, it is an equal opportunity offensive verse. It will offend everybody. At least it should. Here's what it says. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This, this verse was written to a very crazy church, a church filled with sin, a church filled with all kinds of crazy problems. Um, this is like the <laughs> this is like the opening ceremonies on steroids. I mean, the, you do a little research into the Corinthian church; these fools were buck wild. Paul here goes, "Listen, don't be deceived. Those who make their life all about this kind of sin, they will not inherit the kingdom." And and some of you were on that trajectory; you were headed down that road. But then Christ came in and Christ showed you the foolishness of the road you are on. Christ showed you he has something better. Christ showed you he can forgive you of all of your sins and set you onto a new path, a path that's filled with life, joy, a path that's not easy by any stretch, but is so worth the struggle, so worth the challenges that come. It's a path that leads to heaven, leads to becoming more like him. And that gave me hope because I'm like, hey, as bad as this seems, as disrespectful as this seems to Christianity, and it is, as, as evil as this looks, Christ has come to save people just like them. And hey, if Christ hadn't intervened in my life, I'd be right along with them. If it was not for the grace of God, I would be right along with them, futile in my thinking, darkened in my foolish hearts, worshiping the creature rather than the creator, but God stepped in and saved me. And I have the chance now to share that same message to someone else who might need to hear it. And so that kind of gave me hope amidst all the outrage. It was like, hey, this is still the most important thing I could ever share. Christ loves you. He died according to the scriptures. 
He atoned for your sins, and he rose on the third day, according to the scriptures, proving he has power over death and over sin. And if he conquered death and sin, he can conquer it in you as well. I hope that this video gives you some cool things to think about. I would love to hear what you've been reading about. I'd love to hear what you've been hearing when it comes to this opening ceremonies. What were your thoughts? What was your take on all of this? Have you heard a really cool perspective that seems like it's not getting a lot of a lot of publicity? I'd love to know about it. Leave it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, if you haven't yet, give this video a like, give it a subscribe. That helps me out a ton. I appreciate it very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless.